Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel or if you're new welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be a little bit more on the serious side. Um, if you don't know I actually live in Houston, Texas. The storms caused some very 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 devastating flooding. Now I was lucky and blessed. I did not experience any damage, any flooding. Um, in fact, my neighborhood was completely dry from what I could see today. Today was the first day that we left the house in, I want to say, maybe four or five days. And so I got out, I walked around my neighborhood. There was, our streets were clear, um, our sidewalks were clear, so we were just happened to be in a good place um, that did not experience any flooding and as far as my home is concerned did not experience any damage. However, the same cannot be said for the majority of Houston and in fact, while I didn't experience, while I didn't experience any significant flooding, my the area around me did and so we're kind of island islanded in um, and now we're kind of st stuck <laughs> um, so I am supposed to be going on a trip I was actually supposed to leave in the morning super super early I have now had to reschedule my flight I want to say three or four times because both of our airports are still shut down and so I will hopefully be making my way to Austin in a few days once our highways clear up. Now I'm closer to a highway that given a few days may clear up. So I'm, I'm crossing my fingers that I'll safely be able to get out and get to the airport. I'm, I'm driving to Austin to fly <laughs> out of state. Like I said, uh, we, are, we are islanded. In. I know that's not a real word, but uh, forgive me. I just can't think of a, a, a better word. Everything around us is flooded. Um, and so with that being said, I know this the video won't necessarily help in our situation right now, but, and unfortunately it's true, this is not the first hurricane that has hit Texas. It won't be the last, and it is certainly not going to be the last hurricane that's going to hit this country. And so this video is going to be all about how to prepare for a hurricane or a major storm. Don't forget to check out, for something a little more lighthearted, my acting series, which will I think it's going to be here. We're going to say it's going to be here. Go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. And without further ado, let's get started with the video. Here are just a few things that I put together um, over the last few days of basically being stranded in my house. I put together a list of just some basic knowledge on how to prepare for a hurricane or a storm. First thing, know where your local evacuation routes are and have a place to stay in mind or already set up more importantly actually already set up so that when you evacuate you know where you're going and there's not a whole bunch of mass chaos also have a bag ready to go and in that bag have a disaster supply kit in that kit you should have things like flashlights batteries and a, a first aid kit and in that first aid kit you should have any medications and that's both non-prescription and prescription medications that you're gonna need any band-aids any ointments that you're gonna need um, <laughs> I'm accident prone so I always have band-aids and Neosporin on hand just make sure that you have some of that type of stuff in your first aid kit also in your disaster supply kit make sure that you have some cash on you you never know what's going to happen and in a hurricane or a storm especially 
electronics may be down, they may not be able to run a car, they may not be able to, you know, whatever it is. You may just need to have, sorry, there's hair in my face. You may just need to have cash on you and on hand. So make sure that cash, batteries, flashlights, a blanket and an extra pair of clothes or pair, an extra set of clothes are handy and accessible to you in this kit. You should also have all of your important um, paperwork. I don't know if that's, yeah, your important paperwork. And that's going to include things like a birth certificate, any of your insurance paperwork that you're going to need to have on hand, some social security cards, important documents that you would need um, in an emergency situation or in any situation. Make sure that you have copies of those things inside that kit as well. Also, make sure that your family has a family emergency plan set into place. You can find these plans. I mean, if you, if you just don't know where to start with making an emergency family plan, you can find these plans in any internet search. I mean, literally just type in family emergency plan or family emergency plan hurricane or family emergency plan tornado. But make sure that you have a family emergency plan in place in case you get separated from family, in case any of the power or your internet or anything goes out. If you get separated from your family, you're going to want to know where to meet up, who to contact, who to let know you're safe. And this is doubly important. If you have kids that are old enough to grasp things like this, make sure that they know how your emergency family plan works. If you are planning to stay in your home and not evacuate, still know where those evacuation routes are. There have been many cases, even here in Houston, of homes, especially in this last storm, that have never flooded before, that completely flooded out and people had to be, and are still being emergency evacuated out. So still have an evacuation plan and still know where those evacuation routes are. Also, keep your disaster kit on hand. If your lights go out, if your power goes out, you don't wanna be searching in the dark for your emergency kit. Just make sure it's on hand, keep it next to you at all times. Make sure that you have a way to receive any emergency alerts or warnings. This is crucial to your safety, especially if you are going to be staying in your home. And I say this because <laughs> as annoying as it was and as tired as I have been the last few days because I have not been going to sleep until sometimes 5.30, 6 in the morning, my phone kept getting flood alerts, flash flood alerts, tornado alerts, and not just alerts, warnings and watches because tornadoes touched down here. And I want to know with as much time as I can that I can get to a safe place in my home if a tornado touches down or if there is another flash flood warning. No, you're not always going to have access to a phone. You're not always going to have access to the internet. You're always not always going to have access to your power because your TV may go out. So have some type of backup plan in place so that you can receive your emergency alerts and your emergency warnings. Have a contact person outside of your city or state. You're going to want this person so that you can contact them to let them know you're okay. And for all the people that are going to be calling in and checking in on you, if they can't get a hold of you, but you've let somebody know that you're okay or that you're not okay, you know, it's good to have someone that everybody can get a hold of in case they can't get a hold of you. Make sure that you have an emergency contact outside of your city or state that you can stay in contact with, that if you get separated from your family, once again, you can call, they can call. If you call and talk to this emergency contact, if you can't get in contact with each other, you'll know, at least know, your family is safe, whether they're with you or they're not. Actually, the last thing that I just said, make sure you have an emergency contact, is also, oh, that's outside of your city or state, is also good if you are planning to evacuate. The next thing I would say is to make sure 
that you have plenty of water and non-perishable food. The grocery stores are still shut down. Today was the first day I think we didn't have any rain. And the only store that was open was Target. Walmart was shut down, Kroger was shut down, um, HEB was shut down, and these are all of our grocery stores here. But it has now been, like I said, I think four or five days. Even if these grocery stores weren't shut down, there are no trucks that can get in to restock and resupply them. So make sure that you have food, non-perishable food, and water for at least four or five days. And now I say that because our storm lasted a bit longer um, than I think they were predicting that it would. And it came in a lot heavier than um, we were warned that it would come in. So pay attention to how long the storm is supposed to be in your area, but it is good to have water and food, non-perishable food on hand for at the very least four or five days. What I'll say before I wrap this video up is above all, keep yourself and your family safe. Listen to all of the evacuation warnings <laughs> and any warning for that matter, listen to the warnings, pay attention and adhere to the warnings. If your city is being evacuated, leave. It is so hard to leave your things behind, but they are just things. They are not worth your life. Get your family and get to a safe place. If you are in a place that has been told to evacuate, stay in contact with someone <laughs> at all times because if you're staying in contact with someone, and then all of a sudden you're not, someone's going to know something is wrong. And it's not to say necessarily that they could get to you, but they may be able to get a hold of someone who can, if you can't get a hold of someone yourself. And also, you're going to have people who are worried about you. So just make sure you're staying in contact with at least one person outside of the hurricane, tornado, storm area. I will also say, don't wait until the last minute to go get your groceries, to go get your water, to go get your non-perishable foods, to go get your gas, which I'll get to in a second, because I promise you it will be sold out and or the grocery store will be complete chaos. Trust me when I say, if you get some type of forewarning about a hurricane, about any type of major storm that's coming your way, just go to the grocery store, get your water, get your non-perishables, get it ready to either go in your car or go in a safe place inside your home that you can get to even if your power goes out. Now, onto that gas statement. <laughs> Whether you are evacuating or you are staying home, make sure that you have a full tank of gas ready to go and I say that because you do not want to be driving out of town and stop at a gas station and I will tell you you don't want to do that because everyone else had the same idea and they had it before you gas stations will run out of gas and will be shut down and if you think that is a strange foreign notion I did too until I went to the gas station and I was not even in an emergency situation when I went I went to the gas station, which is around the corner from my house, and every single pump was turned off. Now, I'm not sure if it's because they had already decided they were going to evacuate. I don't know. It's neither here nor there. The point is, I could not get gas at a gas station that I go to whenever. And, well, I wasn't panicked because I did have gas in my car, but I did want to top off and make sure I had a full tank. I wasn't planning on evacuating. I wasn't planning on going a long, long distance because I did go out and get a few more groceries before I came back home. On my way home, I stopped at a, a different gas station and, you know, was lucky enough that there was gas there. 
So I say that to say, don't wait until you're hunkering down to go get your gas and don't wait till you're out of town to go get your gas. This next point I wanna make, I don't think I can emphasize enough. Once your storm has started, whether it's a hurricane, whether it's a tornado, whatever it is, stay off the roads. Unless you are just in some dire emergency that absolutely is life or death, stay off the streets. Stay in your home, stay in your hotel, stay wherever it is that you have evacuated to do not go out on the streets but and I say but wearily because I'm, I'm so serious do not go outside if you don't have to but if you absolutely have to if it is an absolute emergency life or death situation one try not to go after dark <laughs> and two do not drive through something that is flooded. I don't care how shallow you think it is, you cannot tell. And if your car stalls, it will sink. It will, and it will stall if you get stuck, you are stuck because there's not gonna be a whole bunch of people out there who are gonna be able to pull you out, to be able to pull your family out. You will be stuck and you can die. As heartbreaking and as sickening as it is so many people die from drowning in their cars because they got stuck and could not get out and it was because they thought they can make it through a, what they thought was a puddle do not drive through a flooded area through a flooded street just because it looks shallow doesn't mean that it is and on that same note don't walk through a flooded area here <laughs> at least when lakes and the gulf floods there are all types of wildlife in the water there is all types of debris in the water there are things that will pull you up under the water and again you don't know how deep it is you could be walking step in a pothole step in anything or just step off a curb and not even know it and go up under the water so if you have to be out after this storm has started absolutely do not go through a flooded area and try not to travel when it is dark outside and finally don't be afraid to ask for help. And don't be afraid to accept help. This is an emergency situation. Don't let your pride get in the way of your safety. And I don't mean that to sound as blunt as it probably did, but do not let your pride get in the way of your safety or your family's safety. There are people out there who are willing to help you and who want to help you. So take it take the help i hope that this video was helpful to somebody out there like i said i know that this is a little too late for our situation here in texas but this is not going to be our last hurricane so hopefully it can help somebody in the future i before i finish this video have to say a huge huge thank you to every single one of my friends and my family who reached out to me and reached out to my family here every day and I mean every day you will never know how much that helped us how much it meant to us to know that somebody outside of this crazy crazy storm was concerned and 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 you will never know how much it means to me and how loved I felt know that it helped 
know that it helped keep me sane <laughs> and I really truly felt the love from every single one of you that called, sent a Facebook message, sent a text message. Every single one of you, I felt the love and I cannot thank you enough for checking in on me and my family. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. If you would like to see more disaster relief videos or if you would like me to do a video on a mock-up family emergency plan, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. And as always, if you have not already, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to check out my acting series and some of my other vlogs for a little more lighthearted videos. And make sure to hit that little bell so that you can get notifications whenever I post a new video. I hope that everyone is staying safe and dry, and I hope that you all have a wonderful day. Bye, guys.